continuous probability density function. Let's take up an example. And with that, let us try to explain what continuous probability density function is. So there is a, a bottler of soft drink. So he has a machine and that machine is filling soft drinks in different bottles. So just imagine an assembly line on which there are thousands of bottles are coming and uh, the machine is filling what um, filling uh, soft drink in each of these bottles right and the bottles are 16 ounce bottles right so that is the weight and but some bottles will have maybe a little lesser than exactly 16 ounce some bottles may have little more than 16 ounce and so on and so forth, right? But if I consider this just to the 10th of an ounce, so I consider 15.918 as 15.9, 15.927 uh, as 15.9, something like this, 16.123 as 16.1. Uh, and uh, there, there could be the weight like 16.023, I'll consider as 16. So most of these bottles will have the weight of 16. So on, on uh, the x-axis, you have the ounces. And on y-axis, you have the frequency. With how many bottles have this weight? How many bottles have this weight? So mostly these bottles... We have this weight, 16. Some of them will have 15.9. Some of them <clears throat> will have 16.1. But when I'm writing to the tenth of an ounce, right, amounts which are rounded to the nearest tenth of an ounce. Then 15.918 is also 15.9. 15.923 is also 15.9. 15.907 is also 15.9. So all of them, all of those weights are clubbed in 15.90. So you get this kind of the uh, histogram, right? You get this kind of the histogram. So the, here, I mean, he's actually dealing with the discrete random variable that has a probability distribution. Now, supposedly, instead of saying this, I mean, round it to the 10th, let's say he round it to the hundreds. Uh, so you have 15.91, 15.92, like, like that, right? So what happens is that the same thing the same thing will have now. So some of them. So it is going to be like this, right? It is going to be like this. This is all 15.9 types, uh, 15. Point 9, 0, 15.91, 15.92, 15.93, and so on and so forth. So I'm just building up the case. Right. And sorry for very badly looking graph. So here you have, let's say, 16.9, uh, 16 uh, let's say 01, 16.02, 16.03, and so on, all of them. And then you have few like this, right? Few like this. Something like this. So all, this is also there. 16.1. Now, but it is to the hundreds. I mean, it is rounded to the hundreds. It is still a discrete variable. 
this guy is still a discrete variable. So this is a probability histogram. This is still a discrete variable. The diagram um, like this here. But supposedly, if he is going to round to the thousands, or if he is going to round to the 10,000 of an ounce, then this is a definitely continuous variable. Then this is definitely a continuous variable. Uh, 15.9. 16, 16.1 and so on and so forth. So here, this is a discrete random. This is a discrete random variable. This guy becomes a continuous. Random variable. This guy becomes a continuous random variable. So the definition of the probability in the continuous case is going to presume that there is some kind of probability density function such so that the area under the curve gives the probability associated with that you are trying to find out the probability that uh, uh, it is going to lie between two points, A and B, right? That is area under the curve give the probabilities which are associated with the corresponding interval. So for example, I have the function like this. So supposedly I, I need to find out the probability that this random variable is going to lie between A and B. Right. We'll take on the value in the interval a and b. Right. So the probability density function has to be integrated between a and b. That's an idea. All right. So here you have p. Like a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to b. This integral a to b. fx dx, right? For any real constants, a and b. You just need to remember this. You need to find out for the continuous random variable, what is going to be the probability that this x is going to lie in this interval a and b? This is there. So you integrate this fx from a to b. That is it. So a function can serve, please write, as a probability density <clears throat> of continuous random variable capital X if its values fx satisfy the conditions. Satisfies the conditions this. One fx is greater than or equal to zero. For uh, minus infinity uh, to infinity, x lying between minus infinity to infinity. And second, that the integral minus infinity to infinity of fx dx is equal to one. fx dx is equal to one. So supposedly if you have an example, which says this, that if capital X has the probability density, fx equals to k 
e to the power minus 3x for x greater than 0 and 0 otherwise. And 0 otherwise. So find k and the probability that x is going to lie between 0 0.5 to 1. So if you can, please uh, pause the video, try to do it yourself, right? So to satisfy the second condition, what do you need? Minus infinity to infinity, right? fx dx. This should be equal to 1. But this is actually starting from this 0, right? So this value is 0 otherwise. So it is 0 to plus infinity. k into e to the power minus 3x dx. k being a constant. Hmm. e to the power minus 3x dx, right? So k into, I mean, what is the integral of this is e to the power minus 3x upon minus 3, minus 3, right? And uh, this is zero to infinity. Huh? So once you solve this, it will come out to be k into e to the power minus this thing, three into infinity upon minus three huh? and e to the power minus three into zero upon minus three. So this is going to be one upon three. So this is k upon three. And this integral minus infinity to infinity fx dx should be equal to 1. So your k comes out to be equal to 3. k comes out to be equal to 3. Hmm. So the moment you have k equals to 3, you can easily find out what is going to be the probability lying between 0 to 1. So integral 0 0.5 to 1. In place of k, I'm writing 3 because we have already found this out. To the power minus 3x dx, right? So what exactly this is going to be? 3 integral. e to the power minus 3x dx. So you can see this. So the integral of this is going to be e to the power minus 3x upon minus 3 with a limit 0 0.5 to 1. So you just have to plug this up. And once you do that, you will be getting this guy. Huh? So this is going to be the value. I mean, in the paper, <clears throat> I'm sure, I mean, they would not be expecting you to actually write this, but this much is enough. Okay. So I'll be doing the cumulative density function of the continuous random variable in the next class, right? And we'll be connecting the probability density function of the continuous random variable with that, uh, with the cumulative density function of the, of the continuous random variable in the next recording. So in this class, we have defined what the probability density function is. We looked at it uh, intuitively. What is the uh, probability density function of the continuous random variable looks like? And we did one simple example based on this. So this is what I wanted to do in this class. Thank you, Vita.